Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about how I make my adorable kitten colors for my craft tables. I hope you guys like my DIY video of how I made them and let's get on with the video. For this you'll need a strip about 28 to 30 inches. Two additional ribbons are about 12 to 14 inches. Six inch ribbon for bow one, two inches in width. Three inches of ribbon for the middle and half an inch in width two large D-rings, some thread, some hot glue, a small D-ring for the middle section, but you can also use a jump ring, either or that works best for you. Lastly, you'll be needing a charm or a bell, but for this project, we're gonna be using a charm. What you wanna do first is grab the 28 to 30 inch ribbon and fold in half and make that crease line in the middle of it. This will help you create the first center pleat. Fold opposite sides to create that first pleat. I like to pin up my folds so that's just easier for me to do when I'm sewing them down. But for this, I highly recommend some sewing clips. After pinning, your center pleat should look like this, as well as the back. This is just my preference, but I like to fold it in the middle to see everything is lined up. After checking everything is okay, you may start pleating half an inch or an inch, depending how long your ribbon is. I like to try to get at least five pleats, but my ribbon was a tad short, so I was only able to do four for this. After doing both sides, if you want to check with my method again, just fold it halfway in the center to see if everything's lined up. Since the ribbon was a tad short, I did attach the two D-rings just to make sure that it still fits. It doesn't hurt to check before stitching down the pleats. Once you're all set, remove the D-rings from the collar, and then we're going to stay stitch down the pleats. When stitching, please go down the pleats, not the opposite way. Also, try to not backstitch. This is just to hold down the pleats. Once you've done one side, continue on to the other. Remove collar from machine and cut off the excess thread. I mean, you don't have to do this method, but this is just kind of a force of habit of mine. Grab your 12 to 14 inch ribbon for the centerpiece and we are going to stay stitch in the middle. I pin it in the middle so it doesn't shift around when I sew. Pin the back piece of the other ribbon behind the collar. I recommend putting two more pins at the left and right sides of the collar just to keep the whole ribbon in place. Once the pins are placed, we're going to stay stitch. I'd like to start slightly at the tip of a pleat and then work my way down in one direction. By doing this, you're not pushing the pleat up since it's already been stitched down. And again, once that has been done, remove the access thread. This is a must, please do this. If you accidentally cut too much ribbon like I did, please cut the top ribbon first. And if you did cut the ribbon, please burn the ends. My air conditioner is on, so that's why the fire is just going rapid. Take your first D-ring, fold with the front and the base ribbon, and then pin it in place if you can. And then grab the back ribbon, fold, and place it on top of the other folded ribbon. And then remove that pin and pin it in place. And then we are going to start stitching where we left off. Pivot your collar and then start stitching up. Back stitch a bit. Pivot your collar once more and then stitch up and down quite a few times to lock that D-ring in place. 
This is what it should look like once you've secured those D-rings and then cut the excess threads. Now that the collar is done, we are going to be working on the two little bows at the front. I forgot to mention to you guys at the beginning, you'll be needing a four or five inch ribbon just to make the smaller bow to sit at the front of the big bow. You don't have to make a secondary bow. This is just my preference for the design. Grab your six inch ribbon and fold to the center part and overlap the two ends. And then hand stitch down the middle. Don't use machine. Do this as well for the little bow if you want to make a secondary bow. Once that is done, you may grab your little bows and start putting them on top of each other and line them up in the middle. Fold once in the middle and then back. And then hand stitch them all together. And then you're gonna grab your, either your charm or the bell for this collar and either put a D-ring, a small one if you want to, or a jump ring for that matter. Dab some hot glue at the back of the bow and then grab your three inch wrap around ribbon and attach it to the bow. This is just my preference. I'm wrapping it around twice. You can wrap it around once, it doesn't really matter. But for secure reasons, I put another dab of hot glue this is also just my preference but I'm putting a jump ring just because some people like to change their charms on their collar instead of just being stuck with it when they have a d-ring whatever charm or bell you're attaching to this bow put the ribbon through the jump ring or d-ring and then wrap it around that bow and for the last time put another secure placement of hot glue at the back If you have any extra ribbon at the back sticking out, cut it and then burn the end of the ribbon. Once you have completed the little tiny bow, it is time to attach it to the collar. There are two methods to do this. You can either hot glue it onto the collar like I'm doing right here. If you want to sew it instead, you have to sew it through the wraparound and through the back ends of the collar, but I don't want my threads showing at the back that it already has, so I like to hot glue it instead. Last thing you want to do is attach the tie and closure at the back. So grab about 15 to 18 inches of half an inch ribbon, fold it, have it go through the D-ring and then out from the loop, pull really tight and then tie the D-rings together into a nice little bow. And that is how you make a standard kitten collar. These kitten collars are made for humans, not for pets, and they are definitely not tug proof. If you guys liked my video on how I made this standard kitten collar, please give this video a nice like. And if you want to follow me on my other social media accounts, all the links are down below in the description box as well. And make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to see more DIY crafts such as these in the future that I'll be doing. And I would like to say thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it and I will see you all in my next video. Take care. Bye.